Right, go on then, Elise, start us off. Um, I did Dr. Jekyll and his views on science and religion. Um, he's a believer in science and he rejects religion because he turns to Hyde and the transformation of Hyde, which shows that he might support Darwin's views on evolution. Who supports Darwin's views, sorry? Jekyll, because he says that Hyde has an ape-like spirit. Um, and this could then... Uh, Jekyll's point of view here could show Stevenson's purpose of criticising Victorian society, of um, criticising Darwin's views and not accepting them. So you think Very Stevenson agrees with Jekyll? Yes. OK. Um, anyone disagree or agree? I disagree. Because? Wait, sorry, it's what that Stevenson agrees with Jekyll. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think... Stevenson portrays Jekyll as a bit of a hypocrite. Yeah. Because how he um, fails to accept that, like, ha- like evil's a natural part of himself, because he uses Hyde to take out all his evils. Instead of, like, accepting it as a part of himself, he just blames it all on Hyde. Yeah, that's, that's a good I point, actually, isn't it? Why? I agree with Lee. Yeah. Um, because um, I think he uses Jekyll to... As, as a way of expressing his own opinions. And he uses him to contrast with Utterson as well. Because Utterson, um, I don't know, he kind of seems like more of a character who's kind of dealt with his own personality. And that's why probably why he chose him as a narrator. Because he can look at Jekyll's like, situation um, like objectively. And... Um, yeah, he contrasts to Jekyll's like scientific heresies, and Utterson's displayed as like a really religious person. So I think Stevenson's more using Jekyll's viewpoint rather than Utterson's. Yeah. What's wrong with Utterson's viewpoint? Um, uh, he he's really he, I don't know. He fits into a lot of the conventions of society. Yeah. Like how he's really religious, and I think. Be a bit unwilling to. He might not be very open-minded because he's very tradi- traditional and like his religious views and his views on like the class system and how you should behave. Who Watson? Yeah. So why make him a narrator if you're if you're Stevenson and you don't want just to side with Watson? Why is he a narrator? So that you can see everything that's wrong. With First hand. Ah, so he represents the society, yeah. and we criticise Utterson. Yeah. Um, anyone agree or disagree that we criticise Utterson? Yeah, I kind of agree. I did Utterson. Okay. And I said how. Um, he Can I film changed. your book while you while you talk to us? <laughs> um, Go on then. Said how he like shows the point of view of an educated man within within a society. Yeah. And how um, it's it's kind of like. <laughs> it's um, it's it's by like what they said about how we sh- he's shown that we kind of see how it's not always the best way to be in society. It's like upper class isn't always best because of what happened to Jekyll. He was upper class and he still took the drugs. Yeah, I can see that with with um, Jekyll. But what is it about Utterson that makes us reject Utterson's point of view of society? Um. Is it also his like religious views? Go on. How um, he's very he's quite narrow minded and not open to scientific side. Can you give me an example? Um, I don't really have. <laughs> Anyone? He always yeah. says like, "Oh God." Like, oh yeah, like the, that when he was talking, wrong. Yeah, when he was talking about um, the hide limbs, he said, "Good God," like because he didn't accept where he lived. Yes, but how do we know that? Um, yeah, how do we know that Stevenson's wants us to reject that? You know, why why isn't it something positive when he turns to God? Because nothing happens. Ah, so God doesn't intervene, no. and that shows. That they're not dealing with the situation very well. Okay. It's Who is it that we're supposed to side with then? Do you think in in this book? Well, I disagree with that, but I don't think oh, I think on. we should be siding with Utterson and not he. Because I think if you look at like Stevenson's background, he was quite an upper class person himself. Yes. So I think in this book it's about how class is emerging and how 
like, drug tape, about drug taking, and he doesn't want the other class to fall into the trap of doing that himself, so he wants to have the separation still. Yes. So he wants to talk, like, with Jeff, he's a character that's causing like, the classes to merge. So he doesn't want that to happen, I think. So in Stevenson's writing, then, he's not using Jekyll to represent the upper classes. He's using Jekyll to warn the upper classes yeah. about what's coming with drug-taking. Is he warning them about anything else? Um, I think also religion, I think. Go on. I think Jekyll's uh, relying on science and instead of like, religion. And Stevenson won't, I think, because he would be quite a religious person. Yes. So I think he wants... Religion to stay and people to stop taking such a keen interest in science and trying to do things that shouldn't happen, which is what happened to Jeff with Hyde. Brilliant. So he's promoting Christian faith and, yeah. and morality. Right, Catherine, you were going to disagree. Um, yeah, I was going to say that actually his background, Stevenson's background, would suggest that he is criticising the middle classes. Go on. Um, because he, although he was raised um, as like he was raised in Edinburgh and he was right, in the strict middle class of, in Victorian times, but um, he, he tried to, like, because he thought that the middle class were hypocrites because um, they, they'd be, like, one way during the day. They'd act like all middle class, but then at night they would go, like Hyde does, they'd go to, like, Soho and places like yes. that. Um, and it's, like, how they're hypocritical in their personalities. And so that's, like, how he... I don't know, it's kind of how he's criticising Utterson because Utterson also is, like, very middle class, but then he has, he is also hypocritical as well. Like, Yeah, how the, do we see him being hypocritical? Well, in the chapter... Uh, it's, I think it's the search... Hold on, hold on. Yeah, in the search for Mr Hyde, um, it says at the beginning, if it was his custom of a Sunday, blah, 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 to sit close by the fire with a volume of some dry divinity, which yes. refers to, like, a boring passage in the Bible. Yes. Um, but then, actually, in that night in the chapter, he goes and searches for Mr Hyde, um, because he's obviously really curious about it, and it's showing how he's kind of... He thinks he should be one way, like, being middle class, but he actually he wants to go and look for Mr Hyde. Yes. And it shows how his personality is actually split and he isn't just middle class and really boring but he wants to present himself as middle class and he's super political because of that oh, that's a good idea um, Soho would have been as it is now red light district at the time yeah and so um, you're suggesting that the split between Mayfair and Soho and Jekyll and Hyde is a dramatisation of what actually goes on in lots of middle-class men in Victorian yeah, England. Yeah, and um, it was kind of like a basis, because I think in Edinburgh, where he grew up, it's like the London that's in the book is like the Edinburgh where he grew up, yeah. and there was the, it was like the new town or the old town or something, yes. it was like Soho in the book, and it was where all like the um, middle-class men would go in Edinburgh, and it just shows like another example of how his background is how he's criticising. Yeah, so, so it's an attack on the hypocrisy of the middle classes. Yeah. Um, is it an attack on the on just the men? I think so, yeah. What? They yeah. never mention women. All the, yeah. yeah. They do. They, well, when, I think it's at High Jekyll's house, when the old lady says, like, smoothed by yeah. something, the face of hypocrisy. Yes. Something. So that kind of shows, like, that fits in with, like, the mask theme that everyone's, like, suppressing stuff. Yes. Themselves. Excellent. Um, right, new topic. <coughs> Which character did you do, Lizzie? I did Jekyll. Right, tell us about Jekyll. Um, well, he's like a wealthy, middle-class person. Yeah. And um, in, I don't know which chapter it is, but where it says large, well-made, smooth-faced man of 50. I think the smooth face represents how he's like got an indestructible exterior, which kind of like gives him a, like an air of mystery which kind of links to how he's suppressing something. And then... Um, Does smooth face link us to what we were saying about hypocrisy? Yeah. How? I think because it's like he's got like an exterior and he doesn't want people to like see what's inside him. Brilliant. Is, you used the word mask before, I think, yeah, as well. Yeah, I think it's like a mask theme throughout the whole novel. Excellent. Um, what else is a mask? Who else is masked in the novel? Have we got that theme? Is is um, Lizzie White? I, yeah, but yeah. 
Go on, I would then. agree that Jekyll's mask, like there's um, a bit in the chapter, I can't remember, the one to do with Jekyll. It was like, Jekyll thought it was all, oh yeah, Dr. Jekyll was quite at ease. Um, he was, like describes Jekyll as having a slyish cast. Yes. While, when, whilst he's with Utterson, which kind of shows that he's like put puts on like a face, but then he's got a different like hide underneath his face. Like he's wearing a mask, but underneath that is hide. Brilliant. I think hide could you could describe him as completely unmasked. Yes. Like he has no social. Doesn't worry about social conventions or yeah. anything like that because. I think he is described as pure evil. He is, yeah. That's what people find, like when they say they can't dis- they can't put a finger on why they find him so like repulsive. Yes. Probably because they don't recognise someone that doesn't have like this mask because they're not used to seeing someone that's so like pure yeah. and like ha- doesn't have. Yeah. Masks. So, is the book suggesting actually that masks are necessary, I or that actually we should get rid of them? I think. Stevenson could be criticising the Victorian um, social conventions that you have to be perfect and act in certain ways because it's unnatural. It's there is like because Jack will think there is good for yes. everybody. Yeah, I think in some ways Stevenson sides with Hyde because he never tries to like like change who he is. He's always he's not he's always honest about who he is. He's yes, never, he's like never suppressed himself. That's interesting. So, are we saying then, if Victorian society allowed people to express themselves rather than hide it and be hypocritical, then that split in the personality between Jekyll and Hyde would never have happened. He would have taken the drugs and something else, different forms of personality would have come out, which were safer, or is that going too far? Does he suggest that that would happen to any of us? You know, would our evil side would come out, or is he suggesting that it's only because of the person that Jekyll is that his evil side comes out? Yeah. Which way do you want to go? I think because Jekyll, I think he's criticised Jekyll because he's like a like stereotypical middle class man, and that he uses like the drugs as an excuse to do bad things, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone would do that. Maybe it's just like attack on the defense. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree that um, it is like because it shows that how um, like the repression of like feeling guilty about like your your personality. It, it, yes. It, yeah, it's like the voids in ego and super ego. Okay, do, do you, are you familiar with that? No, no. Do you want to explain yeah. it then? Um, it's like how. Um, well, id is like your base desires, like your animal instincts. Yes. So that'd be like hide, kind of. And um, ego is like, well, peace yeah, from moral peace yeah from. it's like the balance between id and superego. And superego is like. Hold on, let's go back to the moral policeman idea. What does well, that it mean? kind of relates it to superego. It makes you um, acceptable to society. Right. Yeah. So superego is um, like your unconscious yeah. mind, like which is framed by how you're up, how you're brought up, and like your society. And then you're, because you repress like the guilt, and he he uses like a really weird example. Uh, Yeah, the Oedipus complex when someone like a son has sexual feelings towards their mother, and it feels jealous of their father, and they suppress the guilt, and then that guilt resurfaces as conscience. Obsession, like religion. Have you followed that? Mm Mhm. Have you? I think so. Uh, okay, let's see if we can do this then. Yeah, he calls yeah. he says religion is a mental illness, like and Who it's says that? Freud. Right. And he's the same time as Stevenson. Yes, yes he was. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let's take one step at a time then. How is religion a mental illness in the book? Do you think? How is Stevenson presenting that? Um. Well. Characters kind of use religion as like an like an escape goat to like their actual self, their dual <coughs> personality. Like Utterson goes back to the like religious Bible, like to read it as a way of like being part of society and like being part of those conventions. And it's like he use they use it as like a I don't know, like a say like O C D, like religion and O C D. Yes. Because they keep saying like they keep saying like 
or a god and making references like yes. that could be a parallel to you, like if you have a certain routine or things you have to do in a certain situation. And are you saying religion is like the ego or the superego? The ego. The superego is the society, the, con- the conventions of society, and religion is the, like, the suppression of like, that with your like, base desires and your guilt, and that was served as religion. As an ego is like your conscience, not your unconscious self, but your conscious self. Your conscious self. Could make you acceptable to society yeah. if you're religious. Okay. Um, do we need to discuss the Oedipus complex? Would it help or not? I don't think so. Well, probably won't. I don't really see it. I don't think it really No, I can't really see any like male jealous. Yes. Jealousy towards the heart. And the replacement of the father figure. Although Stevenson did have a really big fallout with his dad in his in his childhood, and that was how. He went home and then he wrote the book. <laughs> but does it surface? Can we see that theme in the novel anywhere? No, I don't think so. So, I mean, you know, Jekyll is the father of Hyde. You can look at it that Hyde way. Hyde is jealous of Jekyll. Yes. Does Hyde therefore seek to replace Jekyll? Well, he does get strong more over He does, doesn't he? So we have got a bit of an Oedipus complex going on, except we've taken out the mother figure. Why has Stevenson taken out the mother figure in this relationship? Because he wants to show that it's just man and woman. Maybe. He doesn't oh. value in Victorian society. Women. They don't value yes. the views of women, so there aren't any. Okay. Isn't really. There's that girl who sees the murder and that lady in Soho, but there isn't really any other mention of Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Matt. So, tell me something. To do with this, or yeah, something yeah, else. yeah. Um, Tell me something to do with uh, Doctor Jekyll. Doctor, and Mr. Hyde. Uh, well, Dan and I did uh, Doctor Lanyon. Yes. Um, and in the introduction, uh, it says that he is unhappy at Jekyll because of his divergence from scientific orthodoxy. Yes. And this could, um, and and because Jekyll's research has obviously gone further than um, Lanyon's, there's obviously a large sense of jealousy. In throughout the novel, but he's still loyal. But then he could also be angry at Jekyll, for it may have been him that caused Lanyon's death later Go on, on. Uh, with through the meeting of them and the way when he saw um, the transformation, transformation from Hyde from into Hyde Jekyll. Hyde into Jekyll. It was that that caused his death. So that's why. Are we supposed to sympathise with Lanyon or criticise him for just giving up on life? Which way do you think we should jump? Um, I think we should sympathise him in one sense because, unlike Jekyll, he's not trying to create something like, or like how we Jekyll's don't know created lives. Yeah, we don't, of course we don't know what he's been doing, but he he's remained loyal to Jekyll. <coughs> when Jekyll sent him the letter, he did what he asked, even yes. though he didn't know what was going on. But he didn't ask for like information about it. Yeah, so we value his loyalty. Yeah. Um, but in the end, he's given up on life. And so is loyalty more important than than living a full life? I'm serious. I missed you know. the question. Ask the question Okay. Again. Are we supposed to care about Lanyon's choice to give up on life because he's, of what he's seen? Um, you know, does it matter? How are we supposed to react to it? Well, if... If um, Stevenson is expressing his opinion through Jekyll, and Jekyll doesn't like, I don't think he likes Lanyon that much because he refers to him as a something, I don't know, it refers to him a bit like a moron that has like narrow, that's narrow. Well, it's, yes. it says that in the past yes. they've had like. They've had a big disagreement, yeah, and they haven't spoken in years. Yeah. Like medical yeah. so it, issues. We probably not like. Lanyon because we side with Jekyll because yes. that's what how Stevenson wants us to side with. Agree or disagree? Uh, I think we should pity Lanyon for not having the strength to carry on and to change it was not change his views but to kind of adapt for time. Ah. I think I don't think I think we should like, disagree then. 
because he was so he's so narrow minded, like with religion, and like he did never like had time for science, like he didn't really care. And what Lanyon? Yeah. Well, he's a doctor, so he's still a scientist. Yeah, but like, oh. So go on. Oh, what sort science, of science does he, he not have the time? Was he religious? Um, what do we think? Is Lanyon religious or not? Yes. I think, well... Have we got any evidence? Well, he says, oh, God, oh, God, when he finds that, when he sees light yes. turning into death. Yeah. So go on, then. Well, because he's narrow-minded, like, when he, like, finds out about death, like, everything that he knew, like, shaped, like, his, like, life and, like, research on was, like, completely taken away from him, so he didn't have, like, he didn't know anything from that, like, caused his death. Excellent. Um, if Catherine's right... And Stevenson wants us to side with Jekyll. Why does he kill Jekyll off? Well, I think ultimately what Jekyll done, what Jekyll did, was wrong. So, although he's like may have discovered something different and new, mm. what actually happened? Like he's created Hyde, and we see in the book what Hyde has actually done. So I don't think it's almost as if Jekyll doesn't deserve maybe to live for what right. he has, has done. So is Stevenson saying this is what's wrong with our society in a, in a better society I'd be allowed to let Jekyll live or is Stevenson agreeing with society and saying no I've got to punish him I'm going to kill him off which way is he going if he like kills him off it's kind of the, the kind of warning of drug taking Yes. Criticising the use of drugs in Victorian society. That would work. It shows that he died because he was dabbling in drugs. So, in your version, then Stevenson agrees with Jekyll's, um, like trying to break away from society, yes. but taking it too far by using the drugs and trying to almost trying to like play God. Right. So he's kind of like a balance between religion yeah. and science. He's not all religious or all yes. science. Yes. He's probably wants like a middle ground where it's not like an extreme personality. It's like yes. Hyde, which is pure evil. Like, also, when he is purely good, but like a middle ground, so that yeah. you don't have to resort to what Jack would want to do. Excellent. Well done. Right, important question. If I put this on YouTube to revise from, um, I'll edit out the pauses so it'll be shorter. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you want me to take each topic and reduce each topic to like three or four minutes so you'd have different videos to watch? Or would you like it all as one continuous thing you can just listen to as a podcast for the whole thing? I think continuous because everything links in. Yeah, yeah. continuous. Yeah, continuous. Continuous. Right, continuous it is then. Thank you very much.